Hi folks, and welcome to the Meaningful Money Podcast. This is session number 411. This is the podcast dedicated to helping you put your finances in order. My name is Pete Matthew, and I'm going to share with you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. I'm here to help you make sense of money. Here we go. Once again, great to have you with me. Now, lasting powers of attorney. They are misunderstood and most often ignored by far, far too many of us. And often that's due to ignorance. Sometimes it's due to concerns about cost. So today I want to clear up some of those things and I've enlisted the help of just the right person. So usual drill, uh, after the main body of the show, I'll be looking at the most recent review that's been left, announce what we're going to be talking about next time. But before all that, as always, this podcast continues to be brought to you by my friends at Seven Investment Management, who've been sponsoring me here for ever and ever. So I'm really grateful to them for doing that. Please do check out what they're up to. They're at 7im.co.uk. That's the number 7im.co.uk. Go check them out. So today I'm bringing back uh, Dan Garrett, Chief Exec of Fairwill, a company that I've now partnered with to offer low-cost wills and now lasting powers of attorney as well. So if you've been putting either of those things off, making a will, getting your powers of attorney sorted, you're definitely going to get some value out of the conversation with Dan and also uh, out of the service that they are offering. So I'll be sharing details after the interview of this new arrangement, which uh, includes a pretty deep discount on uh, the services, the will writing and the lasting powers of attorney service. So remember, notes and links from today's show there at the show notes, which is the only link you need to remember, meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 411. Here's my conversation with Dan Garrett of Farewell. Well, it's uh, great to welcome back Dan Garrett, uh, Chief Exec of Farewell to the show. Dan was uh, on the podcast back in June last year, 2020. So Dan, great to have you back, my friend. How are you doing? You okay? I'm brilliant. Thank you so much for having me back. It was a pleasure last time. Yeah, and it'll be a pleasure for us to, to have you back this time. And uh, I felt like we really got on last time and it was it was great. So And good feedback as well from the listeners, which was great. So can you just um, sort of bring us up to speed? It's been seven or eight months and they've been a challenging seven or eight months, uh, you know, to a great extent. How has the sort of experience of the pandemic been from Fairwell's point of view? <laughs> Yeah, it's a really interesting question. You know, we're, we're definitely an industry that's uh, very close to closely affected by what's been going on. So I think last time we spoke, what happened in about March of last year was when there was the first wave of the pandemic, we initially saw we had loads of people with kind of like dot NHS or kind of doctor -y, email addresses yeah. on our website making wills you know it was like you know within the space of a week it went wow. from just the odd doctor here and there to really like a flood of doctors and nursing nurses making uh wills kind yeah. of mid mid february which i think for us you know on our side of things because it was still a bit up in the air how bad mm. is this going to be everyone on our team was like what what's yeah. going to happen here wow. so it's quite sobering really yeah, yeah, it was interesting. Um, so then we started doing free wills for the NHS and that kind of went through the roof in terms of, you know, our, our team uh, dealing with it. I think we did, did something like 10,000 wow. wills, which I, I think, you know, for our, we're, we, we, we're very proudly write the most wills in the UK, but I think for the number two company, I think they do something like 10,000 in a year and wow. we did 10,000 in about two and a half weeks. So Amazing. we went out to hire and train about 20 to 30 people um, over the space of a couple of weeks just to deal with like calls and yeah. customer service side of things that went up loads. Then what we started seeing as well and why I'm here today, demystifying an, a full suite of complicated legal documents that hopefully your listeners want to hear about. Um, we started having huge numbers of people asking about lasting powers of attorney. Mm -hmm. You know, there were people who were kind of like incapacitated with COVID, lots of people in hospital. You know, you have this situation where you could have you know, someone's partner in hospital who normally deals with the finances yeah. and suddenly not only is, you know, your husband 
in a tricky situation medically, but your, you know, your, your gas has been switched off and you've got no idea what to do. And we had this big surge in people who were making wills with us, you know, normally kind of late, late 50s, 60s, 70s, saying, I've got no idea what to do with lasting power of attorney. Kind of like, where do we go for it? And we decided to um, uh, create our own service for it similar to how we do things at, uh, at Farewell to help people to go through that process. We also, so I think six months before we last talked, so in about December of 2019, we launched our kind of fledgling funerals business as well. And we started doing nationwide direct cremation, which is the sort of thing that David Bowie had, okay. where, you know, instead of a kind of like, you know, horse carriage, Victorian mm-hmm style all the bells and whistles funeral you uh do what's called a direct cremation which is where you know we collect the body carry out a cremation and hand deliver back the ashes to the family and then they do their own thing so that could be you know fireworks on the south downs or champagne on a beach um but it's a sort of more non-traditional way of doing things that you know that really um there was a huge amount amount of demand for that throughout coronavirus as you can imagine you know it's restricted numbers of people who could sure. attend a funeral really painful for loads of families um and that's become you know something we, we were hugely proud to offer mm-hmm. and the second half of last year we started uh broadening out into attended funerals as well so helping families to organize really simple personal funerals but without going to the sort of like high street funeral director that lots of people don't find necessarily the most appealing um, proposition for them. So, so yeah, lots of things have changed since we last, last spoke. Um, And the newest bits for us are definitely lasting powers of attorney and what's happened on the the funeral side of things. So obviously you had a bunch of people increasing numbers of people asking you about lasting powers of attorney and as ever any good entrepreneur there's a there's obviously an opportunity there and, and obviously a need which you are meeting so i mean i would say that it's arguably as important as having a will um i don't know whether you agree with that but it's certainly pretty much up there so can you just give us a bit of an outline as to how lpas work i think it's important to sort of set the scene with that yeah sure so a lasting power of attorney comes into action before you die and it's used in the situation where you lose the capacity to make decisions for yourself or you lose the ability to kind of carry them out. So it might be that you've got sort of reduced mental capacity or that you're physically incapacitated and you can't either make, there's two types of LPA. There's a sort of healthcare uh, LPA and there's a financial one as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, really become something that's much more necessary in the last kind of 30, 40 years as life expectancy has gone up, but also as increasing numbers of people uh, deal with things like dementia in their old age. So I kind of, you know, to a certain extent, I agree with what you're saying about it's, it's it can be more important than a will. I say a will is yeah, essential. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and for a lot of people, it's not complicated to sort of will out pretty quickly. The downsides the, the difficulties of not having an LPA in place, I would argue can be much more uh, horrendous than not having a will in place. Like, you know, not having a will in place, you can have really tricky situations. It can cause family infighting. Mm. Not having an LPA in place, you can have someone who's in, you know, incapacitated for 20 years of their life yeah. where it can be really difficult to control their finances. It can be really difficult to make healthcare decisions for them. Um, and, you know, some of the horror stories that we hear from people who haven't had them in place are, are, really do motivate you to get on the phone to your parents in my situation and, and, and get them over the line with an LPA. So, so I hope that gives a bit of an outline. It's basically a document where you appoint someone who's known as your attorney or two people or more to be your attorney, and they're empowered to make certain decisions on your behalf in the case where you lose capacity. Okay. So lose capacity, how are we defining that? That's an interesting one. Um, so there is a kind of like process to go through where you would sort of assess whether someone has capacity or not. And interestingly, that comes through on the will side of things as well. You need capacity in order to make a will. Uh, but you basically, you need the mental faculties or the physical capabilities to be able to make and carry out decisions that are in your own best interest. So often that will be assessed by uh, a medical professional um, 
Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not like the you know the family can just decide you don't have capacity and start arbitrarily making decisions for you. I, it's, I wonder if you've um, have any sort of stats because I mean I I remember you you tell me last time a farewell are writing. I think it's one in ten wills. It may be more than that. One in ten of all wills in the UK written by your company, which is a staggering stat. Um, I wonder when it comes to LPAs, just how few, how many people have them. I don't know whether you've got any numbers on that. Yeah, so I think I do have the numbers on them. I think there's, I think there's four point seven million registered. Uh, LPA is according to the Office of the Public Guardian, which is the sort of the body that you do it through in the UK, which is about, you know, 10% of the adult population. So it's a kind of vastly smaller number than the people, than the percentage of the population that has a will, Guess which what, I'd also 30, argue is 40, too small. Is that about 30, 40%, something like Getting that? Getting stats on that. Is, so, so our best guess on the population who have a an up-to-date will, as in one where they're like, okay, mm -hmm for keel over tomorrow that actually represents what i'd want to happen is about between 25 and 30 percent right. okay about 50 ish percent of the population has a will but lots of people they're like oh you know i've only got one of my kids on on the will and they're both 25 or something <laughs> well, they wouldn't both be 25 but, but yeah so yeah. so there's so a lot of people who make one and just completely forget about it yeah so best guess is one in ten uh, people have a power of attorney in place, yeah. which is nowhere near enough, is it? Particularly as the population uh, gets older. So why do you think so few people do go to the effort of, of putting an LPA in place? I think people aren't aware of it, honestly. Really? Uh, oh, okay. it, there's an interesting difference between wills. Like basically everyone is, is vaguely aware of what a will is. And, you know, we've done so much kind of market and consumer research about it. And we hear the stories of it every day. With a will, people know what it is. They know they should do it. But you imagine that it's going to be such a pain in the ass that you put it off for, mm. you know, on average, seven years. And, wow. you know, lots of people, it's even longer. With the lasting power of attorney, people don't really know what it is. So only about 50% of the population is aware of what a lasting power of attorney is. Mm. And even within that 50%, most people are pretty unsure about the practicalities of it, why you should have it, when you should make it. Um, so it tends to be, you know, the... That if we're talking to a customer on on the phone who's you know like retiring sort of age, or they just like having all their ducks in a row and they're a bit younger, um, once you you know if you start to explain what a lasting power of attorney is, they're like, oh god, I really want to sort that. I really want to sort that out. Um, so so I think it's an awareness issue. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I'm sure it is. I'm sure that's a factor. I, I had in my mind that perhaps a bigger factor might be you know, concern about handing over control and things like that. But actually awareness is usually the main reason of these things, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, there's, there is, you're, you're really right. There is a misconception that, you know, a lasting, a lasting power of attorney is akin to, to saying like, okay, well, right now, I, I, you know, this person could basically just get me sectioned or turn up to my house, take away my keys and, you know, like drive my car off into the sunset. Um, whereas in reality, it is, very specifically for use in a situation where you're no longer able to make decisions for yourself. And it can be really tough for people to, if, if, you know, we definitely have situations where people want to appoint a professional guardian because they've lost touch with their family sure. or there's infighting between their kids. And if they appointed attorney, you know, it can be difficult to choose um, mm. who they'd want as an attorney. Uh, but for the most part, you know, it is saying, I've lost capacity, which is like a quite intense medical definition. Yeah. It's not just like you're a bit yeah. foggy every now and again. Um, in which case for most people, you know, the alternative to someone who really cares about them making decisions in their best interest is, you know, that, you know, medical institutions are making those decisions for you, mm. or you've got to go through this incredibly complicated process of the office of the public guardian appointing what's known as a deputy. And I can talk about that in a bit more detail, but it can be very painful. Yeah. I think it's good that we do actually, because it, sometimes you've got to sort of um, uh, put the sort of threat in places. Actually, this is how bad it could be. Cause I think most people particularly with wills, they might say, well, it'll all get sorted out anyway. And to a large extent, you know, there are obviously the um, laws of intestacy and things like that so that things do get sorted out. Might not be how you'd want them to be sorted out, but at least, you know, things do get sorted out eventually. I think if you lose capacity without 
uh, a lasting power of attorney in place, I think it's just infinitely worse um, and very expensive. So yeah, can you give us just some idea as to sort of how that process works? Yeah, sure. So, so you know, this is not to criticise the office of the public guardian or the process <laughs> behind it. It's just, it's just, you, what do you do as a as a government if someone loses capacity to make their own decisions? In, like you have to kind of watch that quite closely. So, so the process is kind of similar in that you end up with someone who's appointed as what's known as a as a deputy, which is basically the same as being an attorney. But you're appointed as deputy, and that's kind of regulated or overseen by the office of the public guardian. There's an initial fee of eight hundred pounds uh, to register that, which is obviously quite significant. Mm. Then there's a form called a COP one, which is like a medical assessment. Then there's solicitors' fees, which can be sort of three to five hundred pounds just to register that. Then the thing that's really difficult is that there's a yearly assessment and report by the office of the public guardian wow. because obviously, you know, they're essentially regulating it. They want to make sure that someone's not mismanaging funds obviously this hasn't been the decision of the person themselves in a way the government looks at it saying well you know they didn't make an lpa so we now need to step in and oversee this and make sure it's being done right so for instance if you were overseeing someone's finances and you're a deputy every year it's like it's like uh you know doing your taxes gone mad Mm. you've got to go through this whole report prepare all the finances uh you know justify how you spent money on different things you have to make very complex medical decisions on someone else's behalf without having, uh, without, you know, fully understanding their wishes as well. So, so yeah, it can be really, it can be really difficult, you know, and if someone gets early onset dementia or even normal dementia, like we all know people who've got grandparents or parents who have spent 10 plus years in that sort of situation. And if you've got to go through this yearly rigmarole of, doing all their finances, justifying every, you know, way in which you're spending money, even if you knew that their wishes would be for grandparents to have some money or grandchildren to have some money or something like that. Um, yep. Yeah, it can be, re- can be really, mm. really challenging. Yeah, you wouldn't wish that on anybody, wouldn't you? You certainly wouldn't wish to be a deputy for somebody. You know, you might think, okay, well, these are my parents. Of course I'll do it. But actually, yep. <laughs> how much easier would it be if we could have this conversation in advance and, and get these yeah. LPAs set up? So how, I mean, I'll, give, I'll give you a good example of yeah, my, go my my grandma for my mum's 60th birthday her present to her was doing an lpa <laughs> and i know that sounds like i know that i know that makes me sound like a like a like a mercenary salesman but my grandma you know via her friends had a real understanding of just how bad this can be and she was being like i'll tell you what i'll do an lpa for you because i don't want you to have to deal with this and it's for her as much as as, as much as well but it's <laughs> That's actually quite a, a good way of thinking about it, actually. It's like, this, I'm doing this for you because it's going to make your life a lot easier should the worst happen. Yeah. So, I mean, how do we change, if you say awareness is a big factor, how do we change that? Obviously, you and I are having a conversation here. Several thousand people will listen to it, but there's a lot more people than that in the UK. So, I mean, what, what, how can we get the word out more? How can the industry, how can the government get the word out? I think it's a really good question. Ultimately, I think we're quite sort of like, we're quite hardwired to not think about either death or bad things that can happen. It's like just neurologically how we're built. So it's difficult for those sort of messages to get out. And what we've always, what what we've always um, believed in as a company is that, you know, deep down somewhere in your brain, most people understand that there's probably some stuff that you're ignoring that you should sort out. And what we like to do is lean into the practicalities of it by saying, okay, here's this thing. If you get in a, if you get in a tricky situation, it'll save you and your family a lot of hassle and a lot of money. What we focus on is managing the practicalities of it. So it's like, okay, you, you can do an LPA online for free on the government's website a lot of people struggle. A lot of people do that and it's a good experience. A lot of people really struggle. Each LPA you do, and there's the financial one and there's the healthcare one, mm-hmm. is a 30-page form. Mm-hmm. The signing instructions for it are like complicated yeah. to, to say, say the, the least. least. It's yeah, like, absolutely. you know, there's five or six different things you need to do in a really specific order. And to most people, when you're thinking, how am I going to spend my Sunday afternoon? Am I going to wrap my head around these like 60 pages of forms and really complicated mm-hmm. signing? So what we like to say to people is, is, you know, you have a half an hour phone call with us. We have a whole team of specialists who are incredibly good at helping people understand exactly how to make these decisions. And you'll have this wrapped up incredibly quickly for a fee that is 
you know, vastly less than what you would pay if you're going to a conventional solicitor. I think it's that sort of thing where you're like, right, this is half an hour and then it's going to be done. And then you have the peace of mind and you can carry on for the rest of your life without worrying about your LPA. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Having done LPAs for myself and for my parents, those forms are intense. You know, I mean, I spend a lot of my life looking at forms, but they are intense. And it, I, my abiding memory from completing them is the number of times I had to write down my address. It was just like, <laughs> and again, and again, if you've got obviously two 30-page forms for each power of attorney, and you've got two parents, <laughs> that's four 30-page forms. It's, it is intense process. So this is, as far as um, folks doing this through Farewell is concerned, it's uh, a phone call, basically. Is that right? Yeah, it's a phone call. So we charge £180 and we do both LPAs at the same time. There's then a registration fee that you sure. pay to the office of the Public Guardian if you want to, to, to register both of those things. But we basically take care of everything, print out the forms, make sure everything's in ship shape, get it over to you, and then you can register it with the office of the Public Guardian. Perfect. How, is it tricky, like getting things like sig- uh, you know witness signatures and things like that? Um, yeah, so we had that. We had... We had definitely had that a lot on the wills front. So there's, there is the Electronic Signatures Act, but it specifically excludes wills and LPAs. Okay. So this is going to sound really stupid, but the actual guidance that we give to people is witness your will through a window of your house, over a fence, or on a car bonnet with a neighbour. And I know that sounds surreal, but that's those are the, the times we live, we live in at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. So they, you know, your um, folks there at Fairwell will take people through the decisions they need to make, uh, that sort of stuff, and then essentially the forms will be delivered out to people for them to to sign and, and get witnessed and, and yeah. register. Amazing. And, and and a big part of that for us is seven days a week we have a team of specialists who a team of specialists who can answer any question that you have, whether it's I don't understand this particular box, I've filled in the form wrong and I need a new one, or I don't know how how to sign it or where to send it or whatever. Um, so, you know, there are definitely people who would just prefer to do it online themselves and that's totally fair enough. But I think there's a lot of people who are sufficiently confused about it and want to get it right. Definitely. And that's, that's where we found that we're able to offer a really good service. Definitely right. I know it's early days, but I'm, <laughs> any numbers yet on sort of how many folks who contact you for a will end up doing this at the same time? Um, Nothing public, but okay, there's a, there's definitely a reason. There's definitely a reason we launched the sure. service. Um, we saw this huge uptick in will writing, and what we do with our customers is is regularly run focus groups about other products that we could launch that will help them. And LPAs is, was been was firmly at the top of that list. So so it's the kind of thing as well. But because of how we run our business it's uh we've been able to connect and package together the two products so wills and lpas for customers to just be like actually i'm going to get this done yep. all in one go so 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 quite so quite quite a lot of our customers said uh you know if they want to have a will done over the telephone versus um on our online platform in one appointment you know for them and their partner or just them it's like wills, LPAs, whole thing done. Don't have to worry about that for a while. Um, yeah, absolutely. How yeah. often should people review this stuff? Oh, great question. So well, actually I was looking at our, we just did some kind of like data analysis on our um, will writing audience because at Farewell, people pay 10, 10 pounds a year optionally for the ability to update your will. Right. Something we feel really strongly about it. Cause a lot of people are like, Oh, not only did I, you know, if you go to a solicitor, not only do I pay 750 pounds for my will, mm. but if anything changes in the next few years, I'm going to have to pay it again. Sure. Whereas for us, our wills are 90 pounds, pay 10 pounds a year. And it, we kind of incentivize, uh, keeping us up to date as possible. So one in three of our customers up, updates their wills within the first 12 months which I found really interesting because yeah. that's normally like yeah. you actually read the will or a few months later you're like, oh, I've forgotten Uncle Jerry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or whatever it is, forgotten one of my kids. Um, <laughs> and it does, it does happen. Sure. Misspelt, misspelt children's names, people not knowing the, the date of birth of their spouse. Like we've, <laughs> we've, seen, we've seen it all. Um, and so one in three of our customers update, updates it within the first 12 months and 45% yeah, and forty-five percent of our customers update their will within the first two years. Wow, 
Yeah, so for tenor, yeah, that is, that is a no-brainer, isn't it, man? I love yeah, it. and the nice thing is, is the changes aren't, you know, like I've moved house or something material has happened. You know, it can be adding in a gift to someone who's really important mm. to you, or it can be updating your funeral wishes or, you know, amending a message that you want to send to someone to say like, oh, you know, I always wanted you to have this sort of thing. It isn't always just the, the kind of major material sure. bits, which we're really proud of because... You know, we really care about Wills being not just dotting the I's and crossing the T's, but but about really kind of looking after the people who you love. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a great service, man. I mean, I remember you know when we were, we were talking last time, just thinking that this was so needed. The, this whole field so needed disrupting really just to make this stuff as frictionless uh, and as easy for for people to do. So powers of attorney huge issues if you don't put them in place uh, both for you although you know you may not have the capacity to understand just how big those issues are but for whoever is appointed as your deputy so just make it easy by thinking about this stuff uh, in advance and putting it in place obviously contact farewell to do that uh, one of uh, one of the options but a brilliant option to just have it essentially done for you and just tick it off um dan where can people find out more Farewell.com. Farewell.com. Still a very, a very cool name. I love it. And um, we've got details uh, of an arrangement between Meaningful Money and Farewell, which I'll uh, I'll sort of cover off in the top and tail of this show but uh, and tell people uh, where to go as well, sort of to make sure that the, the link is made. But Dan, as ever, mate, congrats on uh, doing great work. And um, it's a real service. You know, I think uh, I love it when sort of the entrepreneurial spirit really meets uh, a very strong need so uh, more power to you man and as ever thanks for your time today really appreciate it absolute pleasure thank you so much for having me back and lovely to see well my thanks to dan again for his insight into a really important subject so definitely check out what farewell are up to they're at meaningfulmoney.tv slash farewell i'll put that on the screen down here meaningfulmoney.tv slash farewell it's an affiliate arrangement right so meaningful money does receive a small payment for every will and lasting power of attorney, which is completed through the links on that page, but it won't cost you any more. In fact, even better than that, there's a 20% discount on wills and a 10% discount on lasting power of attorney fees. I'm so excited by the work that Farewell are doing. It's exactly the kind of company that that I love to watch disrupt the industry that they're in. And if any industry needs disrupting, it's wills and probate, funerals, powers of attorney, what Dan calls the death industry. A little bit dark, but he's right, okay? So definitely check out uh, what the guys at Farewell are doing. That link again, meaningfulmoney.tv slash farewell. Okay, here's this week's review. Incredible and best financial advice I've ever heard by Prince2 Practitioner. Thank you very much. I can't believe Pete Matthews providing all this knowledge and information for free. (laughs) Always makes me smile, that. Uh, Yeah, I do get paid for it, you know, sort of one-on-one, but... I can never help enough people one-on-one, so that's why I do this podcast. But uh, I'm glad uh, you uh, can't believe it. I'm glad you're getting value. From my experience, you wouldn't get this level of quality even if you paid for it. Clearly not a client of mine. (laughs) Very insightful, practical, and reliable advice I've heard uh, so far, and I've listened to a lot of podcasts and YouTube videos, extremely well delivered and explained so that anyone can understand. He also makes transcripts and workbooks available as part of each podcast, most of them. Uh, This man has renewed my faith in financial advisors, which I had previously lost as a result of various encounters. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? You know, um, too many financial advisors seem to do their very best to destroy faith in our profession. But there's some really great uh, guys and gals out there doing the job. So don't lose faith. There's plenty more like me out there. You just got to find them. So thank you, Prince2 Practitioner, for leaving the review. If you want to leave a review to help me out uh, to keep the show near the top of the rankings, the place to go to do that is meaningfulmoney.tv slash love, just like Prince2 Practitioner did this last week. Helps folks to hear about the show, subscribe, because it keeps us near the top of the rankings, which is cool. So thank you in advance. Now, next week, I'm taking a week off. Okay, do this now and again now just to conserve energy levels and also to enable me to get ahead for season 19, 
which is coming very soon. So that'll be uh, the week after next. So definitely check that out. That's going to be great. I uh, hope you enjoyed my conversation with Dan Garrett today. That's it for this session of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Any comments or questions, you know where to go. The show notes, meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 411. Also, don't forget the farewell link, meaningfulmoney.tv slash farewell for a discount on your will and your lasting power of attorney. Definitely go check it out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll speak to you next time. Cheers.